Do you ever wonder what would happen if 50,000 new people moved into your neighborhood or into your city? Well, it's happening and it's about to happen uh, ferociously coming up here pretty soon. And that's because Amazon has put out a bid uh, with many cities around the country to move uh, its headquarters or at least build another giant plant in some city somewhere in America, the city that gives it the best deal and provides the best incentive. And along with it are going to come 50,000 new jobs in that community, which, of course, strengthens their tax base and it increases the property tax base and all sorts of other things. So that's probably pretty good. Of course, other companies who've recently moved into those communities are starting to say, well, wait, what about us? Why didn't we get anything? Why aren't we big enough to uh, demand anything? Whatever you give to them, it's only fair that you give to us. It's sort of kindergarten, but that's the way a lot of us think. So what happens? What are cities to do? And is it really a good thing for 50,000 new people to move into an area? Well, let's think about this for just a second. When lots of people move into an area and bring lots of new money, they're going to need new places to live, nice places. They're not going to tolerate low-end places, especially if they're middle class and above workers, sometimes uh, even executives. So lots of new communities are going to have to be built, and they're going to have to be built fast, and they're going to have to be built on land that may or may not be presently available. So what happens? This is what triggers the gentrification cycle in real estate. And what that means is that old dilapidated real estate is revitalized and turned into nice, great real estate. I was personally involved in this because we built housing units in Austin, Texas, and there's a lot of gentrification happening in Austin. A lot of the old units are torn down, new units are built, and that's the cycle that is normal. It's been happening for a long time. And what we noticed, and I lived through this firsthand, is that we would approach homeowners, generally people that didn't have a lot of money, but they did own a home, and that home has gone from being worth five or ten or twenty thousand dollars to sometimes two hundred thousand dollars or even more. And those people are thrilled to get an offer. They take the money and they run, and then the house is knocked down and other houses are built in its place, and that's what turns over the neighborhood. So there are people who are uh, compensated for their land. But sometimes uh, the buildings that are being demolished are apartment buildings or they're buildings where people don't have any equity or they don't get any of the money that is uh, potentially being distributed. So let's say that it's an apartment building and the apartment building owner uh, receives a million extra dollars for that building more than maybe that person would have expected. And then they give eviction notices to all the tenants. There might be a fight, the tenants might go to city hall and they might complain and they might retain lawyers. So you might take $100,000 of that million dollars and you might spread it around the 20 or so tenants and provide them with some compensation for moving. So all they get, let's say, is the $5,000. So not everybody's well off. And then the builder, of course, then builds the next uh, you know, set of units, sells them for a good price, and the cycle continues. But that's the gentrification cycle, and that's what's in store and at risk when uh, companies like Amazon make big promises. So not everything is awesome. In fact, if you think back about Dodger Stadium when it was built in the uh, late 1950s, early 1960s, they built an area called Chavez Ravine and they used the eminent domain uh, provisions, which was probably a little bit suspicious because uh, it's not exactly for the city good. It was kind of a personal uh, or a private property development by uh, the O'Malley family. So there are people 60 years later who are still bent out of shape about the existence of Dodger Stadium, even though there's millions and millions of people that go every single year to Dodger Stadium and enjoy ball games and so forth. But the gentrification cycle uh, is not a pleasant one. It's not an easy one. There are winners, there are losers. And at the end of the day, uh, not everybody is well off. And who knows what happens to the people who have to take their money and run or get very little money and are kicked out of their place. So just understand how this works. It's an important part of our economic cycle. And I'll bring you more stuff here coming up soon.